You may be missing a semester from your computer science education. So Jonathan, some of us went to school for several years, spent a lot of our money, and now you're telling me I need to go back to school and learn some more stuff? What is this? Yeah, so I tend to go around and uh, look at uh, things like MIT OpenCourseWare, and in one of my searches, I ran into this course from MIT uh, called uh, The Missing Semester for Computer Science Students, and that uh, led me to try to see what they were talking about, and, uh, and it made me wonder, okay, are, are they right? So in this story, uh, sorry, in this, uh, in this posting of this class, it's a set of videos, uh, they're talking about how in some universities, MIT in this case they're referring to, you know, you get into very advanced courses right away, right? Like uh, creating your own kernel and operating systems and uh, advanced networking. But there are certain things that are left to the students to just learn on their own. Uh, so when you look at this list of the missing core of the missing semester, there are some items that I kind of agree with, right? I, I didn't personally go to undergrad for computer science, but even in my, in, in my graduate degree, uh, things like, you know, figuring out how to use a terminal, something that you end up using a lot, uh, something like, um, uh, you know, using Git and version control, uh, just learning how to debug, uh, just simple things like uh, for cybersecurity, like what entropy man, means. So you, you just wondering, you know, okay, maybe this is something that uh, not just MIT, but maybe many schools just assume, okay, let, let's the students, let, let, them, let them figure it out. And I'm curious what your, your thoughts are on this. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the thing. I mean, I'll be honest, I went to an engineering school, and I think one of the things that came out of engineering school with is a better understanding that even with formal education, there's a lot of things that your professors are not going to be teaching you. Mm -hmm. uh, and that yeah. it's kind of on you to be a self-starter. Now, maybe that was my own personal experience. Maybe my professors weren't up to <laughs> the same quality as everybody else's. Um, but I, I felt like learning to teach myself was a big part of it. Yeah. However, if I'd had a checklist like this, I mean, I'm, I'm looking at some of these categories here. Um, the command line would have been great. Version control would have been wonderful. Um, right. There's a bullet there for security and cryptography. Now, I went to classes for that, but I do know that a lot of the folks who went for plain old CS probably had like a footnote about it. They weren't taught in yeah. any real depth about it. They wanted to create people who could write effective code that did the functions it was designed to do, and security might not have been a requirement. Or, so, or, or at or the was forefront it, of, right, of would the Right, would have been thinking. an afterthought. Right. As opposed, you know, get it working and then make it secure, not design it so that right. when it works, it is secure. When you're in college or universities, a lot of the work you do is independent, uh, but you're still doing work with teams as well, so it's, it's surprising that you don't necessarily see the version control covered. I would have loved to have a bunch of these things. I mean, I had to learn Vim years later, and yeah. I, I, yeah, that, you know, that was one of those things that like you sit there and for a little while you bang your head against it and it's frustrating, uh, but then... Then all of a sudden you're, you're, you're just, just like you're doing muscle memory and you're like, I've just saved and quit out of Vim, and I didn't realize I, it, it works now. Great, you know. It, it's cool once you've got it working, but until that moment, it is frustrating. Mm -hmm. I remember when I was first starting, I, I, I used to just try to, the first thing I would do was install something like Nano or Emacs, and like completely ignore VI. And then you start doing, you know, bigger system administration work, and you realize that you know, those few seconds of installing something, you just take too long. Sometimes you don't even need to, right? You just need to change like one file. So it, it, you kind of force yourself to have to learn how to use Vim and VI. I mean, it would have been nice to have it been taught in school, and it sounds like somewhere like MIT is not even teaching it at the very basic undergrad level. So some, you know, people might just be doing the same thing I'm doing. They go into their uh, regular, development environment, and they go and install the tools that they're familiar with, but they don't try to use tools that are just built in, and that will save them a lot of time in the future when they're trying to do other things. Uh, I'm hoping that other schools might be trying to get on, on top of teaching this, but if MIT is not doing it, uh, you know, they're presumed to be one of the best, 
then who knows what others are missing in their curriculum. You know, something as simple as just learning how to use the terminal will go a long way. Trying to teach him how to do small automation work and how to just have some ways to get to shortcuts or just the basic tools in a, in a Linux terminal. That would be something that for every student, it might be helpful to just have the basic knowledge of. I think I learned, I learned C and C++ on a Windows machine in Visual Studio. Yeah, I and did I, too. I didn't really have to learn the console for that, but as soon as I fell into a Linux environment, like if I wanted to do any work in the, the assigned computer lab where sometimes I had to submit stuff there, yeah. that's when like, that's when everything. I had to learn. Like, yeah. They throw you in the deep end. Plus you had to know all the Linux commands too to go with it. Right, that's very true. This makes me wonder what cybersecurity curriculums are teaching. Are there this, you know, what seems basic, what, what you assume a student should just be learning on their own, uh, are we leaving some students out with gaps? Are they graduating with gaps that maybe the, the faculty thinks that they should just learn on their own, but the students never got to, they were just, you know, learning workarounds. And then when we get to the point of that they're trying to get employed, now they have this missing knowledge, right? Like this missing quote unquote semester, like the article said, that they need to now catch up on. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you could apply that to even a lot of the, of the items we see here. Um, you, you think about when someone comes out of school or maybe from even another industry and they come to work in, uh, it doesn't even have to be cybersecurity in, in like a software yeah, development yeah, yeah. field. There's that onboarding time where they might know all the technology and all the, the development kits and the languages, but the specific tools, they then spend time and the company is essentially you know, saying, okay, you get your onboarding time and then you get ramped up and now you're, you're being fully, fully productive. That's almost then a way that as the, if the company says, we can shorten that lead time if these tools and maybe you have a few one or two week courses on these in the, mm -hmm. at the university level. You know, I, I, I like that from a perspective of, of getting people spun up and prepared for a job, mm -hmm. but personally, I'm interested in it because I, I think I understand a lot of these things already, and I've I've gone back in the past and like reread an old textbook or like taken a look at a beginner version of something, mm -hmm. and if there was a topic that it just wasn't explained to me at the the right way at the right time and I never understood it, and I give a, if somebody yeah. gives me like a simple version of I go. Yeah, yeah that, oh, makes, that would make sense. Makes so much sense. Right, and I, I might have like spent like a week trying to understand it in school and, yeah. and missed that question on the test, but like you get another perspective on it and it just deepens your understanding. So I think I'm gonna take a look at this. Yeah, I, I think I will too. Yeah, I was looking around and I looked at the, the video about Git and I actually learned a few new things. So I was uh, glad to look at it and I'm hoping that others can go in and learn and uh, get something out of it. It's generally good too to go back and revisit the stuff you think you know. Like maybe once in a while, a refresher course on something you think is fundamental might give you new ideas, might show you some aspect of it that you just thought you understood correctly, and then you revisit it and you say, "Wow, that that fills a gap. That that makes something plain and obvious that should have been obvious the first time I learned it, but for whatever reason, just didn't click."